Hello everyone. Uh, this is a slightly different video. It's lunchtime, uh, so I thought I'd just turn the recorder on and start recording. Now this video is a little bit inspired by a video I saw by Chris Weir, where he was talking about his Linux Mint setup and his workflow. And uh, people never ask me about my setup, so I thought I'd make a video to show you what my setup looks like. Um, and I want to just go through, you know, how I use Ubuntu on my desktop. Uh, what you're seeing here is my primary laptop. Um, this is a ThinkPad T450, uh, which is running Ubuntu Focal Fossa. Not the Disco Dingo uh, that you're seeing here. It's I just like this wallpaper. Uh, it's the Focal Fossa, which will become Ubuntu 20.04. Um, and I don't usually distro switch, so I just wanted to go through a little history before I show you what I do on my my main machine. I thought I'd uh, mention how long I've been running Ubuntu and where I come from, so you can see how I arrived at where I am right now. So I dug out some old screenshots uh, from the time tube, and uh, you can see the date stamps on these. These are accurate. So these are um, not the date stamp over here, but the date stamp here. Uh, these are screenshots that have been taken over the years. Uh, you can see over the years, like the screen resolution has changed: twelve eighty by nine sixty, and then a couple of ten twenty four by seven six eight, and then we finally get into the nineteen twenty by twelve hundred in a couple of years later. Uh, so this gives you an idea. Brace yourselves for what my desktop has looked like for uh, a little while. Uh, and this is one of the earliest uh, safe for work screenshots I can show you. Uh, the reason why it's safe for work is it hasn't got other people's email addresses and, and details in it and stuff like that. Um, and IRC conversations, which for some reason I have screenshots of. Um, so let's take a look through the time tube. Now, what have we got here? I think this is Debian and this dates from 2004 before Ubuntu was a thing. In fact, this is from February uh, 2004. I was running Debian at the time. Before that, I was running Red Hat. And uh, what you're seeing here is um, me running a game under Wine. Uh, the game is, is called Tower. Uh, you can see the terminal down the bottom, actually. It says it's Alan at Debian. And um, the, this is a, a little air traffic control game that I used to really like. Um, and I managed to get hold of a copy and run it under Wine, and it was great. And if you look in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see I'm using XChat for uh, IRC. And I think that's... Pigeon, maybe, and then there's e donkey for all those naughty downloads, and then the final fourth icon in the bottom left is uh, is actually the tower game itself. And then I've got this panel here. I've got some kind of weird split panel going on. Obviously, I've got my uh, interesting stats about my system here, uh, the date and time, and my uptime, which is obviously useful and important to show you. Uh, I wonder if I can make this go full screen. Can I do that? Is that this button here? Yeah. Um, so yeah, just to give you an idea of this is like the earliest Linux desktop screenshot that I had. And I think, I think this is XFCE. So at that time I used XFCE and we're talking 2004 here. Um, if I move forward, you can see I was using Mozilla Firebird before it was called Firefox, and at the time I used to visit Slashdot. Um, yeah, looks awful, doesn't it? Um, but, you know, this was Linux 15 years ago or so. Uh, again, still running XFCE. Still running Tower. I think this is, uh, this is still 2004. Yeah, this is still, like, within, within that week. Um, still running Tower, because I really like it. Um, and this one I, I threw in because clearly I switched to KDE at this point. And um, so I'm running console as my terminal. I've still got XChat for IF, IRC and I'm chatting to a friend on um, whatever this is. Is that Pigeon? That's an MSN Messenger account that I suspect doesn't exist anymore. So it doesn't really matter that I'm showing you that. Um, but it's a more traditional what you would expect to see with like the icons and panel along the bottom of the screen and the time down there. 
and again I, i'm pretty sure this is uh this is also yeah this is end of february 2004 so i'd switched desktops by this point i clearly didn't enjoy my uh, xfc experience or maybe i did who knows uh but i tried kde and i tried all kinds of desktop backgrounds um and I, I think I was using Povray, Persistence of Vision, to generate these. These were like downloadable Pov files that you could just run through Povray and it would do the 3D render. And I, I for some reason, I was really enjoying this in, in 2004. Um, and then at some point, I switched to GNOME. Uh, so this is GNOME Desktop, probably still on Debian. Uh, you can see at the bottom, it's April. So it's still 2004, April, I'm running Debian. Um, and it looks, you know, just like everyone's uh, desktop back in those days with a weird plastic thing on the desktop. Strange. This was a pivotal moment uh, on my uh, Debian system. This was the day I got the webcam working. Uh, I was super delighted that day. Um, so I had to take a screenshot of, uh, of getting the webcam working. And if you look down in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see this is quarter past one in the morning. So... Yeah, there's tiredness and elation in this uh, in this image, getting the webcam working under Debian. And I, it was really frustrating because it was a Philips webcam, PWC webcam, which used a kernel driver that was, I think there was something strange about the license. It's 15 years ago, I don't fully remember. But I do remember having to keep recompiling that driver all the time every time I got a kernel update from Debian. And that used to really annoy me that the webcam didn't work all the time. Uh, and that frustrated me. Um, and this is where I switched to Ubuntu. I, I'm not sure exactly when I switched to Ubuntu, but this one, uh, this screenshot is uh, 6th of March next year. So this is like the next year I've switched to Ubuntu and I'm doing some coding, it appears here, playing around with some C programming. Um, and I've got, uh, what's this up in the top? Um, G Krellum, where you can see the performance of your machine, either local or remote. I used to really love that application. Um, it had a little fish tank at the top. <laughs> I can't remember what the fish tank represents. Maybe CPU utilization. Anyway, I'm having a wonderful trip down memory lane. I used to do a bit of video editing. See, I'm on the brown Ubuntu desktop. This is still in like 2005, 2006, something like that. Um, and I stuck with Ubuntu. Uh, this is a more modern machine, a higher resolution, still using G Krellum, still using the, the weird split toolbar down the bottom of the screen with all my icons for everything I use. Um, I was probably listening to some comedy on Radio 4 at that time, maybe. Uh, and I also had this obsession with uh, running Windows in QEMU at the time so this is uh this is a little while later when was this this was uh, oh only 2005 uh, september 2005 but i used to run uh you know windows inside qemu um i used to really enjoy like playing with old retro stuff back then um even to the point of going a little bit overboard this was uh on a dell xps um gen 2 it had all the blingy leds all over it, it was a for its time, it was a super powerful laptop, and I was demonstrating the power of this laptop by running lots of uh, QEMU sessions. I think I've got, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, six different copies of Windows running at the same time, you know, mind blown inside VMs, 95, 98, XP, NT server, NT workstation, and whatever's under here, probably Windows 2000 under here. So yeah, I was, I was having fun, my poor little CPU, like, maxed out. Um, when would this have been? When was this? This was 2005. So that's 15 years ago I was doing this this silly nonsense. Is that the last screenshot? Oh no. Also, <laughs> at some point I discovered Firefly. and uh, But, you know, still panel down the bottom, panel at the top, X chat for IRC, bit of Gmail, a uh, bit of uh, dodgy downloads of TV series, loads of IRC, all that kind of stuff. All good fun. Uh, and that's back to the start. So the reason I wanted to show you that is because, uh, you know, that last screenshot is from 2006. And all the way through here, I was on Ubuntu. And so I've been on Ubuntu for, you know, 15 years or so. And uh, my experience has been, you know, like everyone, up and down. You know, sometimes stuff breaks. Sometimes it works. But that's Linux in general. 
more recently i think i uh i really enjoyed using unity when that came out uh i was a big fan of unity some of the design choices that were made in unity i it like resonated with me i mostly use the stock experience and it worked the way i liked it i i liked pressing the super key searching for stuff and then you know typing and then pressing enter and then launch that application or open that document or whatever it might be and then i started working for canonical in 2011 um and like technically you can run you know whatever you want when you're working at canonical but it makes sense to run the actual software we create because then you can uh, more easily test it and report bugs on it and ensure it's better for the users who are using it so i tended to run unity for a long time and when we deprioritized unity in favor of gnome i, I switched to gnome for a bit but at the time this is in 2017 so this is quite recently I wasn't a super fan of uh, Gnome Shell. It just didn't resonate the way Unity did. And the performance wasn't as good as it had been in Unity. So I was getting a little frustrated with the performance. Um, and I traded that in for KDE Neon in February 2018. And I loved KDE Neon. It was so much more performant than I'd ever seen KDE before. It was awesome. Really, really super awesome. So I was using KDE Neon for about 18 months. Um, and in fact, this very machine was a KDE Neon install. Um, I could probably show you that, actually. Um, let me just open a terminal. Uh, you can see it's proper Ubuntu now. But um, if I go to, uh, where is it? Bar log installer. Let me make this bigger. You can see if I go uh, in this file here, there you can see this was originally installed on Xenial. So Xenial was 16.04, so I installed this system, 16.04 KDE Neon, and then I upgraded to 18.04 KDE Neon when that came out in 2018. Um, and then I switched to GNOME Shell uh, sometime in, I think, August last year uh, because I wanted to come back to what we were using so that I could you know dog food it i know people call it dog fooding i hate using that phrase but you know using the stuff we make so that i can report bugs on the stuff we make and you know have some empathy with other people who are using the stuff we make so yeah that's kind of why i switched back to uh, gnome shell nothing you know bad with kd neon um but i really enjoyed it uh so yeah that's that's what i'm on right now is the system that I originally installed KDE Neon 1604, upgraded to 1804, and then I upgraded all the way through 1810, 1904, 1910, and now I'm on 2004. So I've gone through the upgrade cycles for all those systems. A few packages may have broken along the way, and I might have had to fix those, but it's pretty good. So this is my system now. This is 2004, my main laptop that I use all day, every day, uh, both for work and for personal. Um, and I think it's a good idea to run the LTS while it's under development because obviously 2004 is not out yet. The 20 means 2020 and the 04 means April and it's currently February. Um, but I think it's a good idea for to run the LTS. However, I quite like customizing GNOME a little bit because I'm not a super fan of the stock experience. I don't know that many people do run the stock GNOME experience. I'd love to hear from you. If you leave a comment if you run stock GNOME with zero extensions. Like if you run it with zero extensions, I'd be interested to know because I'd, I'd be surprised if anyone does. But that's not what GNOME is all about. The whole point of GNOME is it's a platform you build upon. So you can install extensions to make the experience the way you want it. And boy, oh boy, do I have a bunch of extensions. Um, you can see some of them up here. Uh, I know some people who hate having this indicator area all cluttered. I'll go through what they all are in, uh, in just a minute. Um, but the theme I'm using is the Yaru theme. So you can see um, you know, the, the style of icons and uh, uh, what that looks like and the window style. I have it on the dark theme. I just prefer it. just really, really like this look. Uh, so let's have a look at those ex extensions. So one of them is this emoji selector. And 
I'm a big fan of emojis and you can see there a selection of the emojis I use a lot. You basically just type and when you type a word like if I need a horse then I can just type horse and then pick a horse and then when I click on it it's now in my clipboard and I can paste that anywhere. So it's useful if you're you know, like me and you like using emojis in tweets. So I use that. Um, I also use uh, impatience which changes the animation behavior so typically when you click on this and other things which that took a while um there are animations that like throw this up i think impatience like speeds all that up and removes animations all over gnome shell because i i feel like those animations make me feel like gnome shell is slower it might not actually be slower but they feel it feel my perception is it feels slower one of the interesting things unity used to do when you click on an application and you get an animation that makes the application jump out onto the screen. Um, so if you click the file manager, a file manager window would appear, but there'd be this kind of animation. And when you close it, the animation would shrink it back where it was. And the, the goal of that was to show you where it came from or where it went to. So when you minimize windows, you could find them again. On Unity, that animation was initially slow uh, when you first installed, but over time it got faster because you know where that icon has now gone you've learned that and so it doesn't need to do this slow animation and so i think that's a thing i don't think gnome shell does but unity used to do and i really liked the fact that after i've been using the system for a while the animations got progressively faster because it knew i didn't need to see where the icons went uh the other in i can actually show you tweak couldn't i because that has uh can show you where all my extensions are so here we go. Here's all my extensions. So the other one I wanted to mention is uh, No Annoyance version 2. No Annoyance, um, there's a, a feature of Gnome Shell where it tries to stop you typing in the wrong window. So you don't like type your password into IRC or, you know, into a doc into the middle of a document and not realize you've, you've done it. So it tries to determine the window focus. And I think it's not perfect. And so what it does is sometimes opens windows behind everything and shows you a notification up here that says window is ready and I don't like that uh, so I turn that off and that's what that no annoyance does so I use that um, the panel indicators this one you'll notice I have lots of things over here um, and the reason for this is panel indicators it splits out the normal uh, GNOME upstream menu has a lot of stuff in it and you kind of drill down into each one. I quite like the old Unity way of having a separate icon for the battery and a separate icon for notifications and a separate icon for Wi-Fi and a separate icon for sound and so on and so on. I quite like the fact that I can have separate icons that are focused on a particular thing um, and that the panel indicators extension does that for me. Uh, there's also a thing called simple net speed which is this thing here which I sometimes find useful to keep an eye on the speed of the network basically like what's going what's coming like you know if a backup is running i can see a huge amount of traffic leaving my system it just allows me to keep an eye on you know traffic going in and out of my system and you can click on it and it changes the view to aggregate or individual kind of stuff i tend to leave it on that one which does make it a bit wide but there you go uh, another thing I have here is this sound uh, indicator, which allows you to switch between different uh, input and output devices. This is super handy. Uh, I love this sound switcher indicator. It's called. I love this. Uh, it's super handy if, like me, you're a podcaster or you have uh, a mixer or a multiple audio devices like Bluetooth headphones and so on. And this allows you to very quickly switch the input device and the output device. Now. My laptop's not in a docking station right now, but when it is, this list is much longer because there's audio devices in the in the docking station, and I've got an external mixer plus I've got my Bluetooth headphones, so it that list becomes much longer, and it makes it so much easier to just click that and and then click to switch audio device. So that is a really super useful one. I really like that. Um, I'm also playing with this CPU power manager thing. Martin suggested this thing, which is this thing here. I'm not sure about this. Um, this allows you to tweak the power profile. I've never been a super fan of these things. I guess if I was away from home and 
wanted to eke as much battery as I, as I could, then I would probably choose Energy Saver. And what that then does is dials down the minimum and maximum frequency to try and squeeze as much power out as possible. But I, I typically have, and also turns off Turbo Boost, but you, you know, your mileage may vary, but I, I tend to just leave it on like one of these or something where it's got a, a kind of balanced view. Um, so yeah, those are the extensions I have. I don't know if there's any others in here that um particularly interesting, but those are the extensions I have, which is why that looks like a super cluttered area up there. Oh, there's also this one here, which is um, a screenshot utility. I learned this from the uh, Yaru design guys, where you can just like select an area and it then gives you that little notification, which you could then use to copy it into the clipboard. And now I can just paste it somewhere or you can upload it somewhere or do whatever with it. It's just quite a nice little screenshot utility. I quite like that. So that's that area at the top. Uh, you'll also notice that right now I've got some notifications queuing up here. You see up there it says four. I'm not going to click on it because they might be work related. I'm trying to avoid it, um, but you're going to see them anyway. Uh, and that's this little do not disturb no, um, applet thing extension. And so that allows me to switch off notifications so I don't get stuff bugging me. Um, it's also quite good if you're giving a presentation or recording a video of your desktop so people can't see you know notifications coming in that's quite useful do not disturb i quite like that that should be baked into the desktop i think uh but don't listen to me so that's that right that's that's what my desktop looks like now down the left hand side the keen eyed among you will have noticed the applications i have so let's run through those uh firefox is my primary web browser um i use that for everything i have multiple profiles which i use in order to separate my personal accounts from my work accounts and Facebook account from Twitter accounts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I find that super useful. Uh, that's just my primary browser. I use that for most things. Um, I do, you also know, have Chrome installed and I only use Chrome really for Google stuff. So if I'm doing um, a Hangout meeting with someone at work, I'll use Chrome probably just because it seems to work better than in Firefox. And if it crashes, I'd rather it took out Chrome than take out my entire Firefox browser that's got all my work in it. So uh, that's why I have two browsers, uh, Firefox for work and uh, Chrome for crashy stuff. Uh, Gnome Terminal, I use Gnome Terminal. But what I tend to do, uh, I know some people use tiling terminals and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. But what I tend to do is use uh, Biobu which is a, uh, a screen multiplexer. And then I have multiple windows in Biobu. And if I want to SSH to other machines, I open multiple tabs. And so I'll have all these tabs open that SSH to other machines. I only added this today. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it in my Bash RC. It's, it's a bit annoying. I don't really need that there. But, you know, some people like NeoFetch. All it is is uh, at the end of my um, .bash RC. There's just a line that just says run Neo fetch. And so, you know, it does that. Um, oh, actually, something else that's at the bottom of um, my uh, RC. I use, um, uh, what's it? Undistract me, uh, which means that when you've got a terminal open and you run a long running command, uh, if you alt tab away to something else, uh, you'll get a little notification when the applicant when the process finishes elementary have that kind of feature baked into their terminal it's really really nice and i like it because i often run a command like snapcraft and then i go off and do something else while that's running and i want to know when it's finished so i get a notification so undistract me it's in the archive um i would love that to be installed by default but i don't think that'll happen um my text editor of choice is sublime text yes it's a proprietary text editor um you know you can use whatever you like if you prefer vim knock yourself out i like sublime text it launches fast it's um it's lovely i really really like it i actually paid for it um telegram i use telegram a lot um standard notes is my note taking application of choice i paid for that i paid for five years support for that because it's just my favorite uh, open source synchronizing text editor. There's a good reason why I'm not clicking on any of these because they've all got my work in and I don't really want to show you that. Um, Sublime Merge is a thing. I hate Git. I, I just can't get on with it. 
maybe I'm too old or maybe I'm stupid, but I can't get on with it. I prefer having a GUI that allows me to manage my Git repositories and Sublime Merge is awesome. Snap install Sublime Merge. Uh, file Manager, yep, I still use a File Manager despite how much uh, the elementary guys try and tell me I shouldn't. Uh, we've seen Chrome, uh, Skype, that's just a web, Skype web. I sometimes speak to people on Skype, not very often. I have it there just in case I need to. Uh, Discord web. Sometimes the Discord app is a little bit um, chunky and slow and consumes too many resources. So sometimes I close Discord and only have the web browser open. This is just a Chrome web tab. In Chrome, you can um, create desktop applications, a bit like the thing in Peppermint, where you can uh, create, I can't remember what they're called, ICE, that's it. They're just It's just like a containerized window just for that application. Um, I also have Slack, but I don't use it much. There's a, like three people who talk to me on Slack, and I only have it for those three people and a bot that I look at now and then. Um, it's quite heavyweight. Uh, then there's Discord. I use the Lounge for IRC. Uh, so you'll notice there's a predominance of chat applications in this zone on my uh, my launcher. Uh, the Lounge is great. I love it. It's a web thing. So you just snap install the Lounge and then point a browser at it and you can connect to IRC. So that's running on my home server, the Lounge, and I just point a browser at it and then I can connect to all my IRC networks. Uh, library. I've only recently started using Library. Um, this video will be on Library, uh, or LBRY, however you want to say it. Uh, it's interesting. I have opinions on that. We'll talk about that another time. And Caprine is uh, like a web container for Facebook Messenger. So I've got family members who use Facebook Messenger. It's the only way I talk to them. And so Caprine is nice uh, because it confines all my Facebook stuff into that one window, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, all my Facebook messengery stuff in there. And it's got some nice little tweakable features like you can hide the fact that other people can see you've seen their messages. It's quite nice. So that's really, that's my desktop. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned is the fact that this sits in a docking station and I have two additional displays above to the left and above to the right. And so typically I'll have multiple of these windows open all the time, but placed in different locations on those different uh, those different machines. Um, I tend to have a terminal open all day every day and a browser open all day every day and then a mixture of all the other applications. But those are my my primary applications that I use on a on a daily basis. Um, everything. There's a couple of other. Oh, I also use. I don't know why the icon's not there because I haven't opened it. Um, I use Riot for accessing Matrix. There's a couple of Matrix channels I'm in, um, and I have a Mattermost. Uh, icon as well. I sometimes use Mattermost. So because my work is developer advocate, I talk to developers a lot and you have to go where they are. So that's the reason why I have so many chat things is because some people want to talk to you on Mattermost. Some people want to talk to you on Slack. Others want to use IRC. And so I have a thing for all of them. So it's not that I like being on all these places. It's that I have to be in all these places in order to talk to the people to do my job. Um, and obviously not everyone likes all of these things. That's fine, not a problem. You can use, uh, oh, that notification got through my, uh, do not disturb, that's interesting. Um, to find a bug against that, that was a Chrome notification. So uh, I'll blame Chrome for that. So yeah, that's my workflow. That's a little history of how I got to where I am, why I run 2004 and um, what applications I use on my system on a regular basis. Uh, Feel free to leave a comment. Let me know what you use. I don't care. Um, if you if you use something else, if you use Fedora or use Manjaro, that's fantastic. Using Linux, uh, I don't feel the need to uh, tell people what they should run. Uh, and you know, it's uh, it's a big wide world out there, and there's plenty of choices for us to use. So uh, feel free to use whatever Linux distribution you want. I won't I won't get cross if you use something other than Ubuntu. You know, feel free to use Ubuntu if you want to. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good rest of your day. Cheerio everyone.